what I want to talk about is <clears throat> we are aggressively working on OpenCL 2.0. And the rules of the process is because, well, because a lot of stuff that, that could touch on corporate IP comes up. You know, we are restricted in what we can say about what we're doing in, in any kind of detail. But at a high level, let me just mention, we're looking at more sophisticated memory models that would allow you to have virtual shared memory spanning across the platform. Um, we are looking at a more flexible execution model. Um, and I'll tell you, us CPU folks are not quite content with how tasks work and task level parallelism works within OpenCL. And so we're hoping to have a much more general execution model that does the sorts of things with tasks that we want. I also am going to tell you all about WebCL, but then Tasmin would hurt me because then that would steal her thunder. So I'll say nothing about that. Um, another thing that I'm really excited about, and it cannot come fast enough, what this is is SPIR. I don't know what the letters stand for. <laughs> SP in, uh, Platform Independent Representation. I forget what the S is. Anyway, here's what it is. It's an intermediate representation that is standard across platforms. So it's an intermediate target representation that the kernel compiler would target that would be portable across platforms. What this would allow is anybody who has whatever language they like, Haskell, Erlang, C++, I don't care what, as long as they could generate at the back end this intermediate representation, they can drop into OpenCL. And this would be very exciting. And it gets us out of the business of having to go around and create the C++ kernel programming language, the Fortran kernel programming language, the Python kernel programming language, on and on and on and on. No, we create the SPIR, and then anybody who wants to, any you know, language development group, could target that and run within OpenCL. So this is a very important effort happening within the, open, within the OpenCL community. And I'm hoping by SC12, we'll be able to say a huge amount about it. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I can say. Then we have another effort kicking off, and let me, let me be really clear to you about this. When we sat down to create OpenCL, we deliberately made the decision to create a low-level interface close to the hardware. I wish we'd come right out and said, it's a portable hardware abstraction layer, because when you've all written code, it feels like that, doesn't it? Very, very low level. And our feeling was that we had to get that end of it right before we worried about higher level abstractions. We know that it can be difficult to write OpenCL. Or as one of my friends at Intel puts it, no human should ever touch OpenCL. <laughs> I'm not, maybe that goes a little far. But on the other hand, <coughs> he's kind of right. There's no reason you couldn't have a higher level like the OpenACC interface or the CAPS HMMP. So at any rate, we have an actual working group looking at how would you define a standard high-level interface to sit on top of OpenCL. It's called HLM. So that's all I'm going to say about this because we're late.